Am I still in Alaska? Okay. We just made it into our rooms in Japan. And you wouldn't guess that we're in Japan because look outside. Hello from quarantine. This is like my sixth quarantine this year. Whew. I feel like I'm a pro, but at the same time, every single quarantine, I'm like, I'm going crazy. Thing they have coffee. Welcome to The Truth Comes Out. I'm gonna share with you a couple of things that I wish that somebody would have told me before I signed six years of my life away. I have to make a disclaimer. These views and opinions are my own, Shay Taylor, not the Navy. This is all from my perspective and what I've gone through. I feel like I need to note that I'm not complaining, I'm just sharing. I mean, the majority of my posts and videos are super positive and upbeat just because that's who I am as a person. But I want to share like a couple of different things that just you may want to consider before joining. And at the end of the day, I am so thankful that I joined. I don't regret it for one second. Overall, I'm really enjoying my time. So let's just get right into it. Okay, I thought this shirt was appropriate. Stay salty um, <laughs> for this video. Probably the biggest surprise for me were the evaluations. Once a year, you get an eval, and it's a reflection of how you've done over the past year in work, what you've done with your free time for volunteer opportunities, you know, did you help any other sailors get better as well, help other people get qualifications? Um, basically, like, are you on par? Are you a motivator? Are you, you know, constantly trying to achieve the next level? Are you tenacious? And they rank you, there's multiple different levels, but basically um, the top three are promotable, and then there's a must promote, and there's early promote. <laughs> and you're ranked against everybody else, so depending on your pay grade. So let's say, only give you like a certain amount of each. So say there's only two EPs, early promotes, that they can give you in your shop. Well, if there's five stellar sailors, not every single one of them are going to get the EP. It's very competitive. I think the biggest thing that frustrates me about the evaluation process is there is kind of a game to it. Uh, but for an example, I was once competing against somebody else for the EP and I didn't get it. I got an MP instead. And they basically told me like, hey, you, you did all the things that you should have done to get an EP. This person's just been here a lot longer than you. And she's been, she was there like a year longer than I had been. For me, it's very frustrating because if you have a, a new sailor who, you know, hits all the wickets and is extremely motivated and gets fully qualified within the first six months of being there, um, and you compare it to somebody who's been there a year longer and they just got qualified the same amount, like to me, that, that doesn't add up. So that's one thing I think that frustrates me. And I know that the Navy's trying to work hard to, to change the evaluation process so that it's more fair um, but there there's a lot that goes into it i'm not a chief so i don't know every little thing that goes into it but that that's just one thing that kind of that i wasn't really aware before i joined let's get into some juicy stuff so the drama running in my mid-20s i had already gone through all the high school bs and just like the crap talking behind people's backs and just drama that is unnecessary. Well, I have noticed that some other people joined straight out of high school. They never really left that high school mentality. So um, my biggest advice is to watch your back. Be careful what you're saying around who you're saying it. Don't, don't gossip. Um, the gossip is unreal. It is, it's almost hysterical that in my experience, um, I've had some things passed around, some rumors passed around about me that were extremely not true just because somebody was petty and spiteful. And uh, it, it's just, it's really sad. It's a really sad thing. And I don't necessarily think that this is just a military thing. I think this is just a person, a people thing. 
but it is exacerbated in the military because we do work closely together. We are in each other's business more than the average person. So yeah, just the drama, you're never going to get away from the drama, but there is a way to mitigate it and that's just to do your work and you know, only get close to the people that you trust. I don't share a lot of my personal life with people I work with, period. Like, I've just been burned and I'm at a point where it's like, I know who my tribe is and I know who my people are. And cool if I meet somebody, I'm definitely open to, to having that type of relationship. But from my experience, if you share something, it's going to turn around and bite you in the butt. So that is another thing to think about before you join um, the type of person that you want to be and what kind of example you want to lead. Another thing, this is something that took me a long time to get used to uh, because I had lived on my own for six years prior to joining. I had my own apartment and dog and the whole shebang. Chain of command is different, but for the most part, they want to know what's going on in your personal life because it does affect work because this is different. This is, you know, not just a, a job, a nine to five and you go home. You, you could be called to action at any moment. So they need to know kind of like if you have personal issues going on like with your marriage or with a family member or if you know somebody passed away that you're close to. I would say it's a good and bad thing. It's good that they care and that they like know what's going on but on the other hand I'm very private and like I just said I don't really share my personal life with people that I don't trust. So it's kind of challenging to open up and be vulnerable. Um, another thing that I was warned about, but I didn't realize the severity of it. It doesn't matter your age, what matters is your rank. So if you're E1 through pretty much E5, they keep tabs on you all the time. Like if you have to go outside to go to your car to make a phone call, like you have to verbalize that, hey, I'm going outside, I'll be right back. And just like every little thing, hey, I have a medical appointment this day, this day, this day. I have something going on this day. Hey, my car is like acting funny and it's broken down. Like even things that are scheduled like after work, I've started to get into habit of just being, just expressing that. Basically, you just have to increase your communication with, uh, with your bosses or, you know, your, your chain of command. And that was something that took a lot of getting used to. You have to learn how to go with the flow and not question. And that's challenging for me too. Um, perfect example, and I'm not gonna get too much into it. And hopefully this video doesn't get taken down just because I'm talking for two seconds on it. But it's been, it's been a challenging thing for anyone to deal with. The Navy, the military has to be at a certain level of readiness at any given time because we don't know when, what's gonna happen, what our adversaries are going to do, all of the above. I think the thing that I don't understand is and this is not just military this is the world thing is how the world the media the government the people whoever are harping on getting shot up getting injected um, with something that has not been tested nearly enough and once again these are just my opinions however they do not harp on the fact that how come people dying of heart disease is not talked about. How come obesity is not talked about? We don't talk about the fact that we should probably strengthen our immunity. Getting sunlight, getting exercise, eating healthy, get, getting organic foods, having some mental stress relief from work. Oh my goodness. I think that there's better options out there than to just be forced to take this V word and think that everything's gonna be okay. Like. I don't know, it's it's beyond me. I mean, the, the military is not at the point yet to, to force us to get it, it's still optional. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. I don't think we focus on the right things as a society as far as like how to be the healthiest and how to prevent from getting sick. So this is beyond my pay grade and above my head, but it's just kind of funny to me, the people that are not vaccinated have to quarantine for two weeks, but the people that are vaccinated have to do a working quarantine. So for seven days, all they can do is go to work and come back to their hotel. And it's just funny to me because it's like they're getting thrown in quarantine for two weeks or or the only place that they can go is work. <laughs> I don't want to get too many feathers ruffled, so I'm going to stop talking about that. But it's just... 
I just wish people would advocate for themselves a little bit better. This is also just something I'm going to educate you on. Um, I wish somebody would have told me about Watch. I never knew what Watch was. It's basically like, since we are the Navy and we have to be on ships, we ha someone has to be awake at all hours of the night to keep an eye on and making sure that everything is okay, that our ship isn't under attack, that you know nothing out of the ordinary is happening. Well, we also have that on shore duty and at squadrons. Our watch is not too bad. It's like once one or two days a week. And then it's basically, you go to your regular work eight hours a day or however long your shift is. And then you have another five to 12 hour shift after that, on top of that, um, which is your watch. So everyone takes turns if there's a watch bill, but that that's something that was like, whoa. No other branches really do it, um, which because they're not, they don't have to, they're not on the water all the time. So I get it, but that's something to consider if you're looking into the Navy. Research your rate before you get in. And another thing is when you take your drug tests and you pee in a cup, they like someone has to watch, they say, watch the liquid leave your body. And that was like, so if you, <laughs> what the heck. Like, if you're shy, you're not going to be shy anymore after being in the military. Uh, I, I thought that they just gave you a cup and you go in there and you shut the, the door and then you do your thing. But I guess people are dirt bags and they carry someone else's pee with them and get away with it. So I understand that now. But before I was just like, when I was in boot camp, I was like, ew, you're going to watch me? Like, no. Okay, another thing is you have to ask permission for doing anything crazy like you have to ask permission to go skydiving you have to ask permission to travel to mexico um and certain countries especially if you have a top secret security clearance which you know they just want to keep their tabs on you make sure that you're safe you have to write down all of the tattoos that you have that you have or if you get new ones you have to update them like there's just certain things that i guess took some time for me to get used to and they're not necessarily bad, but they're just, they're things to just be aware of. Anyway, I am Shay Taylor. I drop videos every single week about the Navy and life in general. So if you want to see anything, drop it down and I'll catch you guys later.